to support you. All right. So uh, so here's uh, so let's 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 dig a little deeper then. OK, so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as a speaker yourself, um, it, when did you what made you become a speaker? I mean, how did that happen for you? Man, it, you know, it's funny because I, I can't even say I looked up one day and said, oh, I want to be a professional speaker. That's that's not quite what happened. What happened is, is I was working on presentation skills, selling skills uh, and other soft skills that I thought would help me be more successful. You know, I was a chef at the time. I was raising my youngest brother. He was 12 years old at the time. He and I had moved from Philly to Atlanta, Georgia. I was 24. He was 12. And, you know, I just popped up to Atlanta. I was like, I'm going to, you know, we got to get him up out of the city. Uh, I was a knucklehead at the time. So was he. And I, I didn't like where things were headed. So, you know, we moved to Atlanta. I ended up becoming an executive chef. And I'm managing these restaurants, you know, and I'm trying to build my skill set. But I'm also like, I don't want to do this restaurant thing because that was never my real passion. That was something I was doing to take care of my little brother and take care of myself when we got to Atlanta. And so uh, while I was working on building my skill set, uh, you know, trying to work on my communication skills in particular, I remember one night I was at a Toastmasters club and and they, they were giving out ribbons, you know, for people who, who they thought did the best speech that night. You know, it was no big contest or anything like that. Just, you know, I was up giving a seven, seven minute talk and it's about, I don't know, 15 or 20 people there or something. And so I gave my little talk and that particular night I was talking about uh, my story part of my story and I was trying to uh, craft it into a message that will help people out and so at the end of the at the end of that little talk what happens is some woman comes up to me and says you know you were great yeah I, I think I'd like you to come talk to my students how much do you charge I was stunned <laughs> right i i wasn't sure what to say because i didn't know what like what, what do you mean I, you can get paid to come talk to somebody so she says how much do you charge i wasn't sure what to do but what i did is i practiced something that we teach all the time right now i asked and i listened and she said how much do you charge i said well, well how much do you pay <laughs> right <laughs> and she, she started laughing Answer. right and she started laughing and she said you know, we, we pay speakers pretty good. She said, how, how about $1,800? What? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Where is it? When is it? I am coming. I will be there. So I like hit gold out of the blue and didn't even realize this could happen, you know? And so, you you, you know, you know, a few weeks later, I, I mean, literally a few weeks later, I, I was like, I'm never working in this kitchen again. That's it. I'm out of here. I got, I got a plan B. You know, do you, you know, I'm like, yeah, my plan B is bye. <laughs> right? I'm out of here. Now it's it's funny because here's the crazy part. This is where I learned a very harsh lesson. That is, you can't confuse uh, luck or serendipity with having a process that's really profitable. So I thought that because this one woman loved me and she gave me 1800 bucks, I was like, shoot, you crazy, man. I give me like 100 more of these this year. I'm good. Like I only got to work 100 days this year. That'd be almost $200,000. Like this, this is going to be great. The problem was is that I had no process. I didn't understand the industry. I didn't have a website at that point in time. So needless to say, I walked away from my gig, but my, my day job. But I had a very difficult time ever getting another speaking engagement for the whole next year mm. because I had no process. I I had a I had good I had some pieces of the puzzle. That is, I had a, had a pretty good skill set in front of the room that I had developed. I had a lot of charisma, which is not always necessary, but I just happened to be I had that and I thought that I was going to be able to just kill it, you know, in the market. And and it was a harsh lesson to be learned. Uh, I would never advise anybody to do that. Nowadays, I always tell people, listen, you got a day job or, or you got a gig. Keep your gig if you can. You know, if it's not killing you or you don't hate it that much, hold on to it and build your business uh, at the same time so that you can do things uh, the right way and not out of desperation. But, man, that, that's kind of how I got thrown in the fire into, into becoming a professional speaker. Man, you know, that you, 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 yeah, you just told a, a great story. It's funny how everybody who does anything like this always has a really interesting story about how they, you know, they stumbled into something or good or bad, you know, mm-hmm. went through some things, man. It's, um, it's, it's a funny thing. You know, I, um, you know, I, uh, I'll say that, uh, speaking was fascinating to me, um, you know, that because I, I saw, I saw the potential that it had for helping me to get off the plantation. You know, um, I, I had a really good plantation. You know, Massa was pretty good to me in terms of pay. You yeah. know, when I was a, when I was at Syracuse University, I was I was making over a hundred thousand dollars a year, 
And, um, you know, and so, but the thing was, I didn't, I just didn't like the job. I didn't like the situation, you know, just didn't feel comfortable for me. Uh, and uh, here's what, so every year, you know, there would always be this big argument in the department over who was going to get the biggest raise. Where you got gotcha. a one percent raise, a two percent raise, a three, you know, and all that, and um, and so so let's say you make a you know a hundred thousand dollars a year, or hundred fifteen, whatever I was making at the time, a, you know, a two percent raise is about what twenty five hundred dollars, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 so I did, I think I did my, I remember doing my first couple speaking gigs, and I was like, wait a minute, you're making this much money just for talking for 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And so so I, I would make in, as much money in 20 or 30 minutes that I was going to get for a whole a race for a whole year. Right. And, and I remember going to my department chairman and I said, you know what? Um, I'm just going to do a favor for you. And you just owe me one. Don't worry about when you give it out raises. Don't worry about giving one to me. Just give one to everybody else. And then I'll just call on a favor later on. That's what that's what my thought was, because the truth was, I was like, I'm not I don't really have to argue with people over two thousand dollars anymore because I know right. I thousand dollars somewhere else. You know, and, and so I found that this whole industry, it's really fascinating uh, how a lot of these organizations are prepared to write big checks for, you know, for you know, for almost nothing. Um, and, you know, the key idea seems is, is, is knowing how to position yourself in the right way where you fulfill the needs and expectations. And so let me ask you this. So as you um, got started with speaking, and I know you teach a great pro speakers. And mm-hmm. by the way, everybody, the URL, actually, Al's doing a webinar pretty soon with uh with my brother Lawrence on how to uh, get started in the speaking industry, the website, I'm gonna give you guys a URL. It's greatprospeakers.com forward slash webinar, greatprospeakers.com forward slash webinar. Somebody please put that in, greatprospeakers.com forward slash webinar. Um, so, so you know, when you were trying to figure out the game, the, the difference with you for, versus everybody else is I know a whole lot of smart people who could give great speeches. Uh, it, well, some of whom could give great speeches. I know a lot of smart people who get a few gigs here and there every now and then, but you mm-hmm. want people I've ever, that I've ever seen that just seem to always have an opportunity. And it's not because, you know, like you, again, it's not because you hosted a show on CNN and you're just so famous that they're just calling, blowing your phone up. It's because you have a process where you're able to really uh, make that system work for you. Um, mm-hmm. How did you get to that point? Or well, I know it's hard to summarize it in a quick answer, but can you give some bullet points? No, uh, actually, it's easier to summarize than you think it is. What it is is that uh, after after I got tired of chasing my tail and I started understanding that I was going to need some help in the industry and really did, l- let me take my time and understand what's going on about a process. And and, and I had the, the difference between that is the difference between being a chef and a restaurant owner. See, when I first got in the industry, I was thinking more like a chef. But but thankfully, because I have been managing restaurants, I understood how businesses worked. And I started realizing, no, 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 no. It's not so much the cooking because I, I've seen restaurants with people lining up, coming back and forth in there, and the food is just average. Like, it, it's not even that good. It's okay, but it ain't great. But and 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 the reason they're coming in there is because it's more of a it's it's approached as a business and a process. So what happened for me is is that I realized that I needed to find somebody who I can learn from. Okay, and 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 we teach this right now. So we call it the success cycle. It's real simple. Then get somebody I can learn from. In other words, I had to learn how to model greatness. I needed some people who were doing uh, the business in a similar fashion to the way I thought I wanted to do it. I needed to be able to look at them, whether from the outside or inside, and figure out what they were doing that worked. Then I needed to actually go do it. Now, that's where people fall off all the time. I can't tell you how many times, and it used to happen to me all the time when I was young, somebody tells you to go do something, but you don't do it. Or you don't do it the way he or she said to do it first. That doesn't mean you don't adjust it or that you don't change it so that it fits for you. But if you're going, if you, if if someone is giving you some advice about how to launch or run something, uh, you got to give it a shot because you're going to learn more by actually doing it, even if it's not quite right for you than you would if you didn't do anything at all. And so I, I started when I was reading books on the industry, or I started paying for classes. There's something else. Nobody's going to give you anything. For for free. I understood that also from running restaurants. I can want to cook a great meal. I got to pay somebody for the raw ingredients though. Some, somebody got to bring me some stuff to the kitchen so I can cook with. All right. And so I, I was not uh, adverse to saying I'm going to pay for the information that I want. I just want to make sure it's from a good, uh, a good source. And so I learned to model greatness. 
I got things that they said were working. I use them, and we like to call that deliberate practice right now. That is, I deliberately did what I thought was going to work. If it didn't work, it didn't work. That's okay. I can cross it off the list and keep working and tweaking it. And then what I did is I got real feedback and coaching based on the moves that I've made. So it, it's not that, oh, Al, you were great, man. Yeah, that, that was a more hand class standing ovation. See, all that stuff makes you feel good. There's nothing wrong with that. We all want that. But what I needed was real tangible feedback to say, okay, Al, that was cool, but you forgot to mention your product on stage. Or that was cool, but you forgot to ask for some referrals. Or that was cool, but you didn't really uh, deliver your points, one, two, three, and then give it to them in a neat, nice little package at the end of the talk so that they could take it home with them and pass it along to somebody else as well. And so what happened is, is when I started making my way through this process, and the funny, I didn't know this process step by step back then. I just realized when I look back on it, I was the type of guy, if you told me to do this, I was going to do it. And I was going to keep flipping it, working with it, tweaking it until I figured out why it worked. Because if it worked for you, I figured some version of it should work for me at least a little bit. It might not work exactly the same. I understand that, you know, cause especially because some of the people I was learning from, they, we wasn't even the same. You, you feel what I'm saying? So I, I knew it wasn't going to work exactly <laughs> like it might work for other folks, but I knew you're not going to tell me that this thing can't work in some shape, form, or fashion. And so I tried many aspects of the industry and I actually applied what I was learning, you know. Mm. Well, you know, let me ask you this. Um, well, I'm going to tell you something uh, and then I'm going to ask you a question related to it. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I'm talking to Al Duncan, everybody from RedCoastSpeakers.com. Uh, and uh, the URL for his webinar that he's doing on, on how to become a public speaker is actually in the feed, so you guys can pick it up. But, um, <clears throat> um, okay, so we did a survey uh, with uh, people that are in the Black Business School, and uh, also uh, I surveyed people on my YouTube channel as well just to verify the results. And you're talking about a few hundred thousand people mm -hmm. in the Black Business School. In case you guys haven't joined, you should join. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I asked them, I said, what do you think is more important for people like us? melanated people in America. Is it more important to have a college degree? Or do you think it was more important to learn how to start a business, you know, or, or some sort of business system or business process, you know, to make money? Because I, and I wasn't asking it to uh, say, to shame any particular approach. It was to really just yeah. get to where people's heads were at. Um, and I know that me, I went to college so I can learn how to make money. I, that, if, if there was no money attached to it, I wouldn't have gone. I would have did something else, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so the fascinating result of the survey man, was that 91% of the people said it's more important for people like us to learn how to make money, to learn mm -hmm. how to start businesses. And uh, I thought that was really powerful. I didn't expect it to be 91%. Now, yeah. <clears throat> and once again, you know, to everybody who's a loyalist to our college, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. You know, knowledge is, <laughs> we know this, <clears throat> and college is great. Um, but I think, I, you know, I think of it like a horse and a cart situation. You know, uh, I see uh, coll a college degree is the cart, the, um, the learning how to start businesses and learn how to invest, things like that, that's the horse. But mm -hmm. now, you can, if you're trying to get down the road, you can get down the road if you have a horse with no cart, but you can't move anywhere if you have a cart with no horse. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> right, right, right. And if you're sitting in the cart, you're waiting for somebody with a horse to pull you down the road, right? That's right. And, and that's what happens with a lot, a lot of us. We get this degree. We say, hey, I got this piece of paper. Can somebody give me a job so I can practice doing, you know, doing whatever this piece of paper says I'm qualified to do? Can I manage your business? I study business mm -hmm. management. I don't have a business, don't know how to create one. So I'm looking for somebody with <laughs> right. to let me come manage that business, right? So I got yeah. the cart. I just need y'all to give me a horse. Well, you know, and, and the problem is when other people are providing the horses, their their horses are going to take you as far as, as they decide you're going to go, as fast as they decide you're going to go, and in the direction that they're going to go. You have no say in that because you have the cart with no horse. So if I had a choice, I'd rather have the horse with no cart than have the cart with no horse. But ultimately, maybe having a, 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 horse, a horse and a cart is, is ideal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, with that said, um, you obviously didn't just jump in and magically become this extraordinary uh, speaker who's made over well over a million dollars as a as a speaker. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't just happen uh, because you just you know <clears throat> were like you know born with like a basketball player who's born six foot nine with all these amazing skills or whatever. Like you had right. to learn this. <clears throat> you had to invest in learning the systems that would allow you to build this business that you have now. Uh, if you had to guess approximately how much you know you had to invest financially 
to learn oh. these skills, to get access to the gurus and to, to learn from people who can do who can do what you can do now. Mm-hmm. What did that uh, cost you approximately over time? Man, so over 18 years, man, I, I would I would bet I've spent, I don't know, quarter million dollars easy maybe even 275,000 I'm talking about and understand what I mean I'm talking about uh paying for uh paying for a $20,000 master class here uh paying for somebody's program here paying a thousand dollars for this set of tapes you know and paying another uh fifteen hundred dollars for this for this home study course and things of that nature and then i had to go learn marketing and content marketing internet marketing and things of this nature and then included in that in that money is the money that i wasted on stuff that was garbage uh (laughs) that ended up not working or not or, or not being real because the person who sold it to me wasn't even doing what they said they were doing they just heard it from somewhere else and tried to repackage it and give it to me, you know. And so uh, I, I, it is easy to say that I, I, I am over 18 years, I would say I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I don't have an exact number, but it wouldn't surprise me if I spent a quarter million dollars. And, and the reason that doesn't, obviously, that doesn't bother me at all is because, I, man, I recouped such a crazy investment on that. And it wasn't in the form of student loans. Uh, or nothing like that that I got to pay back. That that thing has by far paid for itself over and over and over and over again uh, easily. And, you know, I, I would gladly pay it again, but I would be even be smart enough to know now that that number doesn't even have to be that high because obviously I would be a little bit smarter about what I needed to pay for, you know, and and who's mastermind or who's class or who's coaching thing I need to be a part of, you know, I, I would be very careful about that, you know, and, and so, uh, I spent a good chunk of change, man. And I don't look at it as a change, you know, as, as a spending, it's an investment and it was well worth it. And I'm still, and, and the reason that number is high is because obviously at the beginning, here's the crazy part. At the beginning, I wish I could have spent that because I'd be worth 10 times what I'm worth now. But at the beginning, I could only spend what I had. So if I had $25 to go buy a $25 book, that's what I was going to buy. And the funny thing is that might've been a hundred percent of what I had. So, but whereas nowadays, you got me, whereas nowadays I can say, okay, let me go take this class. It costs 15 grand or 20 grand or something. And, 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 and that's a different part of my income, if you understand what I'm saying. But before I was willing to give it all, like you can have $25. This is my last $25. You can have it because I believe that this is going to help me generate way, way more. And so I felt like it was worth it, you know, at, 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 at that point in time. And today I feel like it was even worth it even more. Yeah. And the reason I asked that question, I'm speaking to Al Duncan, by the way, from greatprospeakers.com. Uh, and, you know, the reason I asked that question is because um, when you talk about learning and knowledge and, you know, I'm a, I'm a college professor by trade, that's what, you know, that's what I was trained to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that sometimes we, we have to really sit back and really think about what is the end goal? Yeah. You know, uh, actually, I also have, also as a mathematician, there's this concept called um, dynamic optimization, which helps, which means that you solve a problem better by starting at the end goal and mm-hmm. working backwards than you do by just moving forward. Because if you move forward, you're going to be tempted to just do what other people do and just follow the, the crowd. Whereas when you work backward from where you're trying to get to, you co- sometimes come up with a unique solution that works specifically for you. So mm-hmm. if you look at the, the solution or the goal that uh, most black folks have, <clears throat> their goal is, OK, I got to get some money. I got to improve my life. I That's want right. Freedom and, and, and finances is an important part of that freedom. Right. And uh, and so uh, if you're thinking that way, um, you know, you, you know that you need knowledge, you need education, you need skill. Right. I, I want to you know, make money as a speaker or author or whatever it is I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, where am I going to get that knowledge and that skill? Uh, and where am I going to get it at, at a price that makes sense? Or that that is the most efficient price. <clears throat> right. Well, when you do that backward induction and you're trying to say get into that status of, of, of making hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars, um, college education isn't always the uh, the optimal approach because uh, because it's very expensive. You know, mm-hmm. you don't drop a, you know two hundred thousand maybe of your family wealth. You know, getting that yes. Degree. And then also the skill sets that you pick up are not always applicable to the things that you ultimately want to accomplish. Exactly. 
you know, it is a good training program to prepare you for a job typically, but uh, it's not a, it's not a pre- preparer for uh, where the big money is, you know, where the scaled up money is, you know, that's the, right. The scaled up money tends to come to people who make their money, not through labor, but through systems, mm-hmm. which is about developing your system, how important that was. And the scaled up money just kind of seems to come to people that, um, that, that, that are really centered on, on, uh, on concepts like investing and ownership and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and brand building as opposed to, um, you know, I'm going to just, you know, go get a job somewhere. So, so long story short, I think that uh, when I, when I process, you know, when I'm asking you that series of questions, like how much did it cost you? What did yeah. you, I want people to compare, you know, these investments that you mentioned that you made yeah. that we made to get a college degree. And, and I would ask you in hindsight, how would you compare your journey to, uh, I don't even know if you went to college. That's, that's, I did. That's, I, I went to Carnegie Mellon University and I left early because I, I, I got a record deal. I went to become a professional saxophone player. I was on tour, making six figures as a, as a, in the industry, you know. And so I ended up, I ended up leaving uh, school early. And when I went when I went to go back to to get back into my learning after I've messed up my money and all that stuff in the in, in the speaking industry, I mean in the um in the music industry, uh, and, and that's it's a side note. You know, people always think if I got a whole lot of money, that's going to solve all my problems. And I said, no, it's not. Money is a tool; it just makes you more what you are. Whatever you've been doing, I give you a stack of money. You're going to keep doing more of that. You know, if you're an idiot and I give you a big stack of money, that make you a rich idiot. That, that that's that that's all that happened right there. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? So that's where I was on that. And so when I look at uh when I look at the money I could have spent in college, and I spent some, but but not as much as a lot of people have, and and as not as much as I probably would have if I wasn't chasing dreams, you know, going to get a Grammy or something like that as a saxophone player, then uh, I don't, I don't think it would have, and it, this is hindsight. I'm guessing, I don't know for sure. Cause you never know, but I don't feel like it, that I would have got the same return on my investment based on what I would have tried to study in school. And the problem is, is that when I pay for courses, I'm paying for courses that teach me how to make money. It, so they teach me how to set up processes I'm talking about right now, today, when I spend money on something because I want to learn it, I know going in that more than likely this is going to help me make more money than what I'm putting into this thing. This I already know from the beginning. I understand the value of the skill of learning how to take your money to learn something that's going to make your money make more money or make it double or turn into something else. And, 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 and to nothing is guaranteed. So it's all, you know, it's not a gamble, but nothing is guaranteed. It's just the odds of me recouping my funds are much higher because I'm focused on ownership and my money making money and my time and my energy having more return on its investment, you know. And so what happens is, is that I, I think the difference is, is that that type of money is so, so much more target spent, uh, targeted from the very beginning. So your undergrad, I mean, how many times you hear about college students not talking about all talk, talk to them all the time, tease them all the time. How many people, you know, actually got a job? In the degree that they that their undergrad was actually in, that they spent all that money for it. It's very I've run to people all the time, even in academia. That's like, nope, <laughs> I'm in a totally unrelated field, or maybe it's maybe it's kind of related, or maybe not, or I had to change majors a few different times. And so what happens is is that you're getting in there, and this first hundred thousand dollars that you're spending is not very targeted. A, a, a lot of not not for everybody a lot of times it's not targeted in other words it's not very specific i got to take these electives because they told me i had to take these in order to get a degree i had to learn this because i want to do that this wasn't this wasn't oh this is the main thing i'm interested in this is the main thing that i think is going to help me make more money for my family right now tomorrow if i learn this course three days from now i can take this and make and start making some money i just feel like that's not the case and by the time we get around to the real target knowledge like graduate school okay now i'm taking only classes that i need so i can get a promotion at the plantation or you you see what i'm saying so now all of a sudden as you've been taking this this information where you were guided 
uh, towards something that should give you a certain paying job, but not necessarily growing exponentially, all of a sudden you're trying to rectify that or fix it by now taking very specific classes that relate to something that you want to do or that you think is going to help you make more money. And my thing always is just, uh, for me, fortunately, what happened is, is once I got in a place where I wanted to start spending money on the business, the, the money I was spending was very specific already. So I was almost at graduate level, quote unquote, graduate level courses or a graduate level of specificity in what I wanted to learn. I wasn't just learning everything about all aspects of business. No, I was learning specifically about this part of the industry, about marketing for professional speakers, which means I had a much greater chance to recoup my money on that side of things and actually make it grow. Do you feel what I'm saying, boys? Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah.